Hey, how you doing? Today, we're going to talk about Cornish wrestling. I've been meaning to make a video on the art of Cornish wrestling for a long time, and I've never quite got around to it. And what prompted this one today is that I was sorting through some of my books, and I came across this fantastic little, almost a pamphlet, that, um, that I picked up about 15 years ago. Uh, these are really hard to come by now. Um, if you find a copy online for sale, do get it. It's worth its weight in gold. Cornish gold, I suppose. Um, but before we go on to the book, because there's lots to talk about there, we're just going to talk a little bit about Cornish wrestling in general. What we know about Cornish wrestling is it dates back a long time. Um, Thomas Parkins in the 1700s claims to be describing the art of Cornish hog wrestling. I'm not convinced, because what he describes doesn't really fit with what you see if you go to Cornwall and see Cornish wrestling taking place, or you read this book, or other historical accounts, because what Parkins is talking about is, is a clearly a loose grip system, and Cornish wrestling is not. Cornish wrestling is a jacketed system, has a very specific type of jacket that's used to affect the throws. So it's interesting, and we know Cornish wrestling dates back a, a long way, hundreds and hundreds of years, and we know that it's still taken, it still takes place today in Cornwall and country fairs. Um, there are competitions, the Cornish Wrestling Association have done a great job in trying to revive this and make it part of the kind of the Cornish culture. And, um, and it's, it's fantastic that they have because it's great to see. Um, let's, let's have a look at the book because this is quite interesting in that we know this, this particular one, this is a reprint published in 1990, it was republished, so we know it was written before that, but there's no date in this book as to when it was published, but we can narrow it down and figure that out. There are some clues in here. The first and most obvious clue is that this book was written by a chap called Brian H. Kendall. And a, a relatively quick Google shows that a Brian H. Kendall from Cornwall, who was involved in, in the Cornish wrestling scene, uh, died in 1983, so this book clearly predates that. Uh, we know there's a photograph in this book of the 1979 Cornish wrestling team that beat the Bretons 5-2. So that gives us a fairly narrow date range, somewhere between 1979 and 1982 for this book. So we'll say it's round about 40 years old. But obviously the material in it dates back an awful lot longer than that. But that aside, let's look at the book and see some of the things it says, because it's fascinating. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the description of Cornish wrestling. And I'll just read you what it says, because it does it a lot more justice than me putting it in my own words. Cornish wrestling. As with other styles of wrestling, the aim in the Cornish manner is to defeat your opponent. To do this, you must either back your man or effect a win over him on points. A back is scored when a man has been picked up and dropped flat on his back, so at least three of his four pins hit the ground simultaneously. Pins are the shoulders and hips. A back will win a contest for a contestant whenever it takes place, and the bout is then over. But if there is no back during a contest, the bout will be decided on points. I'm just going to um, interrupt myself briefly there to tell you a, 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 an amusing little anecdote that I heard. I was chatting to some, some Cornish wrestlers in Cornwall some, some years ago. And they jokingly referred to something called a Mevagissi back. Now, Mevagissi is a town in Cornwall. And I, I you know, I, clearly I'd never heard of this. So I said, well, what's, what's a Mevagissi back? And they said, oh, a Mevagissi back is when you land on your front because they can't wrestle in Mevagissi. And it's kind of stuck with me ever since. I think it's probably a little harsh on the folk from Mevagissi. I suspect they've got some great wrestlers in, that, in that, uh, the area. But, you know, it still makes me chuckle when I hear of a Mevagissi back. Anyway, where were we? Ah, da, 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 da. ah yes, it's points. You score points when a shoulder or hip hits the ground. One point for one pin down and two points for two pins down. 
All throws must be made from the standing position and there must be no grappling on the ground whatsoever. Not like those uncouth Lancastrians. All, uh, there are, no, read that bit. <laughs> if no points are scored during a contest, a point will be awarded to the wrestler showing the most play, i.e. one who has made an honest attempt to throw his opponent. When any part of the body other than the feet touches the ground, the hitch is broken and the wrestlers must shake hands and restart the contest. The handshake is a formality which is traditional and must take place before a contest begins, before each hitch and after a bout is over. Marks are given against a wrestler who transgresses the rules and three marks will mean one point deducted from his score. It is a foul, for instance, if you put a hand to ground to stop yourself being thrown or slip out of the jacket for the same purpose. Now the book goes on to talk a little bit about the jacket to explain it. Um, we're not going to look worry too much about that because there's quite a lot of information online about the jacket. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of things that the book says about techniques. Because one, there's a technique that has a name that I always think of as referring to something else. And also there's a throw in this book that they claim isn't seen in any other system. So we'll have a look at those. But before we do, I thought it might be interesting to, to look at... Um, some other information about Cornish. For example, what's considered a foul move. Foul moves in Cornish wrestling. The cross collar, a choking action applied to the throat by crossing over the collars and pulling the jacket tight. Essentially, one of the first things you'll learn if you take up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a cross collar choke. Not allowed in uh, Cornish wrestling. The pressure of thumbs or knuckles on the throat. Yeah. The crowbar hitch, where the arm is passed inside an opponent's jacket and is used as a lever. Holding an opponent below the waist. So there's a parallel with um, early pugilistic rules, those brought in by, by Broughton there. Striking with the foot above the knee. We know that technically kicking was allowed in historical Cornish wrestling, but it was much more common in Devonshire and, and Norfolk. In fact, I think there's still a competition in, in Norfolk looking at traditional wrestling that is known colloquially as shin kicking. Uh, deliberately touching the ground with hand or knee to avoid being thrown. Deliberately slipping out of the jacket to avoid being thrown. Gripping your opponent on wrists or fingers. Any play considered by the sticklers as unsporting or unfair. Unfair moves will have marks charged against the transgressor and in, in extreme cases he will be disqualified. Now, I don't know if you noticed it, but I used a word in there that you may have come across. If you've ever come across the phrase, he's a stickler for the rules, that's a phrase that comes from Cornish wrestling. And let's have a little look at that. A stickler is to Cornish wrestling as an umpire is to cricket. A wrestling contest is controlled by three sticklers who see fair play between the two contestants, decide which throw merits points or is a fair back, or if a foul has been committed. Their decision is final, and a two-to-one majority as to points or a back is sufficient to carry the day. Points are awarded by the sticklers when a man is thrown onto his back. One point for one pin down, two points for two pins down. Three or four pins down, of course, means a back, and the contest is over regardless of when it happens. If a contest goes to a points decision, each card is individually totaled, and the winner needs the highest score on at least two cards. So, it's a lovely, you know, a lovely idea that the etymology of the phrase a stickler for the rules comes from traditional Cornish wrestling. But I think it's also quite interesting that three sticklers are making a note of points as the match goes on, and if there is no final decision, then those cards are looked at much the same way as boxing. And I wonder if there's a link there. Um, I'd be very hesitant to say there is, and what direction it is, if there is. But, um... Let's have a look. I promised you that we'd talk about a couple of other things. There's a technique in this book, and it's, it's a defensive technique, that I've always thought of as being something else. It's, it's the sprag. Now, in Catch as Catch Can, 
um, catch wrestling, uh, Lancashire wrestling, a sprag is effectively a post. So when you're you're on the ground wrestling, you're at mat wrestling, and somebody goes to move you, you put out an arm or a leg to, to block that so that you've got a, a, a post, a, 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 a buttress, if you like, to stop you being able to be moved in that direction. And to me, that's always been a sprag. It's a, you'd say, sprag a leg or sprag an arm. But here, it means something a little bit different. All they say about it is, the sprag is used to break up an attack or to prevent your opponent from lifting you. But thankfully, they've got a picture of a double sprag. And what we can see very clearly is that a sprag is almost a leg grapevine in order to stop your opponent being able to lift you. You're effectively locking yourself to him by wrapping your leg around his leg. We've got a single sprag, a double sprag, and a back sprag. Um, the single sprag backs up what we've just said because it says when you are lifted, say for the fore heave with your opponent's left arm, pass your right leg between his legs and hook your right foot behind his right knee. It will be seen that the harder he lifts you, the more pressure he puts on himself. Fantastic little technique. Um, it's something that I've seen in Scottish backhold wrestling and here in Cornish. You know, it's it's not unique by any stretch of the imagination, but there is something in here that they claim is unique. So let's have a look at that. This is a throw called the underheave. There would appear to be no counterpart to this throw in any other form of wrestling, so we can boast of at least one unique move in the Cornish style. Take a grip on your opponent's left collar with your right hand. Step forward with your left foot and duck your head under his right arm and pass your left arm across the front of his body at waist height. Grip the lower part of his jacket on the far side of his body, maintain your grip on his left collar with your right hand and lift him with your left arm until his feet are well clear of the ground. His legs will be pointing to your left. Now turn him heels overhead and drop him on his back with his legs now pointing to your right. Uh, there's a picture of the technique just here. And as it's described, that really is a technique that I've not come across anywhere else. There are similar techniques that I've seen that involve taking hold of an opponent, crossing your arms, coming in, getting hold of them, and effectively heaving somebody round upside down that way. I've seen that. But the idea that you're going to reach out and take the collar and step in that way and take this and, and, and bring somebody... Yeah, I've not seen it. Um, I'd be very interested to hear if you have. Because if it truly is a, a unique technique um, that's kind of only found in Cornish, then it might be an interesting one to try and integrate into... Um, more modern systems. Uh, you may know if you follow my Instagram that I've been training regularly in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu again. I, we've had a video talking about that and I'm really enjoying that. I'm even, even starting to not detest the gi quite as much as I have previously. And I can't help but think that this might work with a gi as well as with a Cornish jacket. So, over to you. I mean, what, what do you think? Have you come across Cornish wrestling? Have you been to a, a fair where it's been, been carried out? What do you think about it? Um, do you think it's fair to say that Cornish wrestling hasn't changed much over hundreds and hundreds of years? Or do you think it's evolved significantly? Is Parkins talking about something other than Cornish wrestling and just calling it that? Or has Cornish wrestling evolved significantly in the 300 years in between? I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. So please let me know. And before you go, I still want to say, I have this book still. You remember I said in, a, in an earlier video, I picked up a copy of this book, a second copy, incredibly cheaply. I thought I was buying a modern repro. It turned out that I'm buying an original version. Um, the video about the guy that wrote this, I'll, I'll link up, up there. I want to give this away. And the first time I have a video that hits 10,000 views after having bought this, because obviously we've got quite a few that have hit 10,000 views in the past. If we can get one of the new videos to 10,000 views, then I'm going to give this away. Haven't worked out who to yet, but I will. So 
share this video. Post about it on social media. Share it on discussion forums if you go there. Like it. Comment on it. Please comment. That's the most important thing. I genuinely love the community that we're building up here. I kind of think of you guys as my fight team. Um, so if you've got this far in the video, comment fight team or I want to be in the fight team and, and, and you are. And if you feel like supporting me on Patreon, then that would be fantastic because we're about halfway through the month and I've got to decide which of my books I'm going to scan and give out to my Patreon supporters. Don't know, yeah? Let me know if there's anything that you'd like. And I'll see you soon. Have a great day.